All right, so if you watch the flying reporter, you'll know that he recently spent a day with us in the hangar over at Elmset. It was difficult to get an impression of what's involved in an annual check in a day. So um, we've done a little follow-up video here. I'm going to show you one or two elements um, in more detail. thing is the ever-increasing burden of paperwork and customised maintenance schedules, which... Uh, have come about, or so should I say, approved maintenance programs which have come about as a result of the ASA part ML. It's probably now UK part ML or something, but it's here anyway. What these doing to the airplanes hasn't changed substantially. Schedules have changed a bit. We've still basically got 115 or 116 items which are going to become due every year anyway. We have got a lot of out of or life items here. Um, red stuff is due this time. We've got out of phase items and stuff that we supplementary inspection directives, stuff that we've reviewed and considered is generally necessary from the oodles of stuff that manufacturers and the CAA, EASA, and the FAA between them come up with. We've got airworthiness directives, again, red ones are due. This is a Cessna 182. They're not bad for ADs, the later ones. There is actually quite a bit to performing an annual inspection on an airplane, and we thought we might show you a little more of it. Um, between me and John, we might do some, you know, follow-up videos. Um, I've got some footage I've shot in the past from cable inspections. We can't spend a lot of time you know, filming or work, it's distracting and time consuming, but just occasionally, you know, I'll put the phone on when I crawl down the back of an airplane and try and impart a little bit more information about how it's all done. All right, so the aircraft interior is stripped out and I'm crawling as far as I can get down the rear fuselage here. We're going to start by making a, an overall assessment of the control system in the airplane, how much cable wear there is, the need to slip cables, and then we'll do a, basically a sort of a point-to-point -point inspection of all the systems. Cables run all over these simple aircraft. It's, this is a primary control cable, this is a rudder cable. Uh, any failures here, you lose a primary flight control. Okay. It's fairly important, you can get, by getting someone to move the controls for you and checking all the numerous wear, chafe points, pulleys, and bits and pieces, you can make a good in situ assessment of the state of the cables and, and these ones are not too bad. So probably a thorough in situ inspection is gonna be good enough for this aircraft this year. But it isn't always, as we'll see later. Okay, so we had a look at rudder and elevator in the rear fuselage. In the headline here, we've got aileron and flap. Okay, and as I say, we can still get a reasonable in situ impression to assess the need to slip and inspect in detail. Operate the controls, run through from, from end to end throughout the wings and the headlining, removing enough panels to see them, make sure the pulleys are free. We're going to check and record the tensions if we don't need to slip the cables. Um, checked and recorded each year, tensions and travels. Um, this is not the ideal place to do this. I don't think I got perfect reading there. Let's just see what we got. Shade under 25. I'm going to take another reading because I think I was pulling on that a bit with the camera in my hand. Yeah, almost bang on 25, which is within limits. Now that gets recorded. Um, 25 on the flaps along with all the others each year and along with the travels of all the control surfaces and that takes two people unwinding the trimmer. Right this is the blue Peter here's one I made earlier moment because the the 172 we've got in at the moment is a relatively decent clean low time airplane that we've maintained for some time and a thorough in situ inspection of the cables and, and control system sort of through the access panels and everything is proving to be sufficient on that. But sometimes it isn't. Sometimes all the indications are there that there's a, a lot more wear and contamination and possibly damage to the cables. In that case, the 
only real solution is to do what I'm doing here and to disconnect the ends of the cable put strings on one end and just slip it out and give it a more thorough inspection you can see this one is pretty heavily contaminated where it runs under the floor from all the grit and dirt and mud off people's boots that eventually accumulates down there particularly if it's not cleaned out regularly and we're going to have a, a thorough look at it so we'll start by running a rag over it get it a bit cleaner and it's a bit of safer method as well because if there are any broken strands that the rag will pick them up rather than my fingers because running frayed cable strands into your flesh is something you only do a few times um, so start with a good clean up you can see just how contaminated that is there and one of the problems is that the internal lubricant that's put in the cable at manufacturer um, does eventually attract some of this dirt to work its way into the cable it goes around the pulleys and it forms a bit of a grinding paste and chews them up internally um, some airplanes are better than others Cessnas tend to eat cables Piper's not so bad, they go thousands of hours without giving too much trouble. Alright, so this one is cleaned up okay and it pulls through the rag and it bends and it flexes. So uh, that'll kind of do, that can go back this section of it's okay. We'll have a little further look at it. There you can see I've pulled another loop out from under the floor. and. Uh, just inspect that loop, pull it back in, move on to the next access panel. And sometimes you have to run through all the cables on the whole airplane like that when you start finding wear and broken strands. Let's just, let's just, we did find some frayed, worn out ones on this airplane, so I'll just show you that quickly. Okay, so on this airplane we did, this is the upper elevator cable. And, uh, couple of them were in in poor condition this is a good example it's where it runs over a pulley at the rear and although I'm flexing this cable more than I should it, it's it's had it anyway it's just to show you that the strands the internal wear has gone through quite a few of the strands and they're popping out and yeah okay this cable is not at the point of failure if it did fail you would lose your elevator control um, and the idea of preventative maintenance is to pick it up sometime before it does fail and of course once you've got this wear it accelerates fairly quickly and it's not just the cable's going to fail eventually you get enough strands sticking out to jam it where it goes through the pulley and the guards where the clearances are small so this needs to be replaced Okay, so when we have happy with our cables replaced or refitted, they'll go back with new clevis bolts, um, fresh nuts and split pins, they do wear as well. The attachment points there to the rudder pedals need a good inspection. They, they Pretty good on these old Cessnas, I think there was a cracking issue on some Aerobats. This is right down at the base of the control column underneath the centre console by the fuel selector on the Cessna. There are pulleys down here, which on this aircraft they're absolutely full of gunge and crud, really need to come out and be cleaned up and lubricated. That is a fiddle, because they're right down in inaccessible areas with bolts, washers and spacers around there, but it's doable. It takes a bit of time. I think there's half a dozen pulleys down there. And that's the push rod that goes back from the bottom of the column to the elevator bell crank. Uh, a lot of work probably comes around every 10 years or so you know a thousand hours 10 years maybe a bit more depending on the use the role of the airplane all sorts of things environmental factors but we're finding now with these aging airplanes it's kind of like the fourth bridge most annual inspections there's an element of the, the inspection whether it's in this case the control system sometimes it's structure sometimes it's corrosion that requires you to go above and beyond what you'd normally expect to do. Um, so it's, a, it's getting that way with an aging fleet. We're spending more time doing preventative maintenance. Okay, 
I hope you enjoyed that. As I say that was a very, very brief look at a cable inspection, which is part of an annual inspection to one degree or another, whether, it, whether you can assess that you're able to do an in situ inspection or whether you need to start slipping cables. Um, an important part of an annual inspection and a small part of an annual inspection there's lots more but not enough time in, in a selection of short videos I hope we can do some more thanks for watching good night